All right, thank you very much for joining us this morning. My name is Ben Reed. I'll be your moderator today, I'm DCS Marketing Coordinator. With me is Jamie Dutton, our presenter today. He's one of our dimensional analysts here at DCS. Jamie, if you'd just like to say hi. Hello. Our agenda today, we're going to begin with a brief company introduction. We'll be on to a use case to show you an example of how traditional process of report creation would be done as opposed to a, using a QDM 3D, one of our tools that we'll be showing today. Following that, we'll be going through the actual report process. You can see the steps that allow you to quickly create these reports and a live demo so you can see it in action and how fast it really is to create a report using QDM 3D. Finally, we'll give you five tips to enhancing reports. So there's just five quick ways you can add and customize your reports either to brand them for your company or to change them to meet your specific project needs. And finally, we're going to end with a question and answer session, which will have 10, 15 minutes, and we can stay in the line afterwards in case anyone has additional questions. Moving forward, so DCS is an engineering software and services company that focuses primarily on two software suites, our QDM system, which is for quality data management, involves enterprise-wide quality data management, Today we'll be working with one particular component of QDM called QDM 3D, which is a standalone tool or can be put into a larger QDM system. In addition to that, DCS does work with 3DCS, a variation and tolerance analysis software system. But like I mentioned before, we're just going to be sticking to QDM 3D today. So talking about a use case, this will kind of put into perspective the traditional method for using QDM 3D to quickly create reports. So as an example, let's say you're told you have to create a 30-piece part report. I have a quick Prezi to kind of walk through real fast. How you can create a report very quickly. But to begin, let's start with the problem. You need a 30-piece part inspection report, and your boss wants to see it within a week. How quickly and easily can you get it? I'm given... 50 dimensions to inspect on each part. And I've got a number of different inspection devices. So I have to create my inspection routine and then run it for each part. This, of course, produces a series of text files and text reports. So I'm given 30 reports, one for each part, text report 1 through 30, with 50 measure sets each. Actually, this is going to be almost 120 pages of reports that I have. So the traditional method is then to compile and interpret these results and then generate my report myself. Or pass it on to the quality engineer who receives my 30 reports, 120 pages, all at once. And he has to interpret and make quality decisions based on all of that information. The question then is, how much time does it take to analyze, add images, compile, and organize a report from 120 pages of data? Especially if I want to add graphs, charts, and I want to use statistical data such as PP, PPK, CP, and CPK. A lot of this has to be uh, analyzed and interpreted from that data, which can take a great deal of time. So let's look at an alternative process. I get my 30 reports with 50 measure sets each. Text report 1 through 30. And I load all of this using a QDM 3D system along with my CAD files right into QDM 3D. After about a minute, everything is imported in, and I have a report that's auto-formatted and automatically generated, which I can then customize for my specific needs. So I've compiled a graphical report by putting all my information in QDM 3D, and I, it publishes an easy-to-read report with all of my stats and charts automatically. So automatically can mean a lot of different things. So how does that all work out? Well, let's go back over our problem. We have a time constraint. We want to include a lot of different information into our report. We want charts. We want graphics, we want to use our CAD data, and we need decision-making statistics. Because when we pass this report on, our manager wants to see the information he needs in order to make a decision on how he's going to proceed. So Jamie, do you want to kind of walk us through the basic steps 
in creating this report? Sure. Um, first, we've got a three easy step process for importing our graphics and our data. And uh, we configure the preferences within the QDM wizard. And QDM will take your preferences, your graphics, your data, and automatically create your report pages for you. So let's talk about what kind of information I can bring into QDM 3D. How easy is it for me to bring my data from my inspection devices? Well, we, we have a number of common translators um, seen here in this list. We've, we've got uh, HST data, HLM data, GeoFactor data. Any 3DCS users will recognize that and appreciate that. Um, we've got a number of translators for CMM. Uh, like CM Dana. Um, further down the list, we've got the GDM Metrolog translator. We have a CAPS translator. Um, we have PC Demos in a couple of different formats. And we've got a Taurus Standard, a Virtual Demos. And we've got some vision data translators like Perceptron. And we can we can do with Data Grabber, we can cover some other ones like blue light, red light, whatever uh, whatever you need us to do for you. So what if I have a, a custom data set? Is it easy to configure QDM 3D to import a custom data set? It's very easy. So let's, why don't you walk us through the actual creation steps of making this report, starting with your template wizard. Um, we start just by clicking on the little magic wand symbol there that the, launches our template wizard. And that will bring up our dialog box to start a new template. Fantastic. This is all within QDM 3D, that, that basic tool we were talking about earlier, correct? Correct. Good. Let's go ahead and click Next. And step two of the QDM 3D wizard, um, we're going to fill in the title block. And click down to uh, import graphics, and then you'll browse to where that graphic is located, your CAD. And you will click on the import data, browse to that location, select your data, and click Next. Now we select in our final step the chart type. And next, whether or not we want the wizard to automatically sort the charts for us. So I see here it says enter zero for auto sort. So if I put a zero there, it's automatically going to set and format all of my charts on all of my report pages. Right. You can put any integer you want there um, to try and fit as many that, sorry, let me start over there. You can put any integer you want there. That will represent how many charts it's going to put on each page of the report. So if you have 120 charts and you say you want 12 per page, you're going to get 10 report pages. If you say zero, the, re the wizard will automatically determine that eight or 10 may best fit the page and make a few more pages for you. So I, what you're saying here is I can auto set all of this and it'll just automatically format my report. Yes. Which leads us to the ergo place setting where it's automatically going to lay them out in the 2D space around your 3D part in the drawing, in the pages. And go ahead and click Finish. And then QDM 3D goes to work for you, giving you these different flavors of how a report page can look. Um, you see some color-coded part inspection table of contents in the first window in the upper left-hand corner. And in the upper right-hand corner, you see about three merged comparator charts on this page. They're on the left side of this small part. And then on another report page, we see a few more parts to the left side, measurements to the left side. And finally, we see a summary chart. This is a special, special page to finish off the report. It's an option you can configure. And we're going to go ahead and show you that. Fantastic. So whenever I create a report, I get my index page, 
I get my chart pages, and then I get my summary page at the end. Yes. Fantastic. So why don't you show us that real fast, how quickly you can create a report from some data and some CAD information. So I'm going to pass the presenter over to Jamie Dutton, so she can show you on QDM 3D. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, absolutely. Okay, we have the QDM 3D product open. I'm going to click on the template wizard. Looks like a little magic wand here. And now we have a new document open. Let's go ahead and leave that on new template. Click next. You can put any description you want here. And now I'm going to find the graphics that we're going to use for this data set. That was easy. Now I'm going to find the actual data set. I'm going to pick the translator for the data type. And now I see the data samples available. As I select that group, I'm going to click Open. Say OK. And right now, Data Grabber is running in the background. You just may not even see it over GoToWebinar, but there's a little box right here. And it's telling me what sample it's on out of the 10 samples. It's just going through all the reports, all those manual PCDMS reports, and finding all the, all the features in each report and looking all the actuals and nominals and tolerances from every one of them to your data set. We're already finished and ready to move on to the last step of configuration, choosing a chart type. Auto sorting the data and ergonomically laying out the report pages. I'm going to go ahead and finish Okay, let's see how our template test went. So the report's complete now. The report is complete. Um, we've got a title block that's filled out. So you just brought all in all our run, all our uh, comparator charts on the page with all the trends are shown. Leader lines are on the part. As I scroll through, I do see some leader lines crossed. And I see my summary page, my summary chart page, and I'm just going to go ahead and uncross these leader lines by running the ergo place as a separate command one more time. And it'll go ahead and reorder the charts just a little bit so we don't have that. Okay, uh, let's see how those pages look now. Um, that's much better. This page is very, very clean now. So, in under a minute, you created a eight-page report from ten different data sets, right? And those are full sets of data. And now we're just doing a little bit of cleanup on the completed report. Is what you're saying? Right. Fantastic. Yeah. Now I can go ahead and save this as the base template. And then we're ready to show how to enhance that in a little bit. All right, so let's go through a couple of quick ways I can enhance. Now we can enhance our report. 
All right, so five basic report enhancements. We're just going to go through real quick today. Adding text to your report, adding headers and footers, legends and title blocks, branding the report, changing up the chart types or adding new chart types, and then updating and adding the graphics. So I can change the graphic so it's a different view or zoomed in or zoomed out on my different pages. Correct. Beginning with adding text to pages, how is this really beneficial to my to my report itself? Um, a lot of template authors will um, will find it helps to describe the part for someone who's not familiar with that part or describe what was happening in the process that <clears throat> during that time that the data was ran. Um, like if they had a tool failure, they might want to add a text to a page and point out um, point out the reason that they discovered for for that <clears throat> excuse me for that bad data or what that root cause was, or just simply describe the part like I went over. Um, Describing the, uh, the types of charts that you've decided to lay out on that page, why they're critical. Fantastic. So headers and footers. Now I see here there's a couple of different headers and footers on the page that you can edit. Uh, yes. Seen here are some examples. We've got uh, four headers that you can add to any report. Um, They'll be seen when you publish a report uh, as a print or a PDF. Um, in this example, I laid out two of them and then pointed out you can choose different fonts for each of them. We have a total of four footers. Um, two of them are shown right now. One of them is set out to be whatever you want for, to represent your company name. And then it's got a little formula for the date. The other footer has a, a formula to show what page of your total pages are, are on there. And you can add a fourth footer as well. Fantastic. So we legend and title block. So can you tell me a little bit about, a little bit about setting up your title block and your legend? Sure. Um, our legend is configurable. And it sets up how your um, how your features are color coded by what statistic, whether they're green, yellow, or red, pass, fail, or in the in between. Over on the left hand side, you see a, a color status where we pick out which criteria we want to choose. In this example, spec limits chosen, and then. Below that are the settings for the spec limit criteria. Um, all you have to do is put in that one number there, the .05 in this example, and it's going to go ahead and over on the right side of the screen shade anything, <clears throat> anything within that spec limit, green, anything above that criteria, .5, yellow, I mean, I'm sorry, between green and .5, would be yellow and then anything above that will be red. And so you can figure that one number and everything's handled in that legend on the right side of the screen after that. And where this actually applies is during my index page, I can see all of my different points and all my different measurements are automatically going to be color coded, are going to be color coded depending on whether or not they're in or out of my spec limit. That's right. Now the title block, we go back. Sure. The title box block is something you just quickly fill out. Um, you put in your part name, your re who created the report or modified it that day, and uh, a project name. You can also add a, a logo box for your company. And let's move on to chart type. We've got two images of the part here. In the first image, there's no charts. In the second image, we changed, we've changed that and added the point boxes around, around the product itself. And the point boxes are in that 
green and red uh, example that we just saw in the uh, in the legend spec limits there. So that's whether or not they're in or out of spec. Exactly. You can you can make a report just on point boxes if you want. Um, but I'm showing in this chart editor how to easily change the point box or whatever features you laid it out as in the wizard to another type of chart. In step B here, I'm showing the comparator being chosen, and then that chart linked at point A is now in step two, a comparator chart with all the stats and the samples in the trend. Fantastic. And finally, once those steps are all configured, you can go through and clean up all the pages, selecting different standard views. Um, we've got the view toolbar where you can pick ISO views, left, front, top, rear, all the standard views. And we've got a manipulation where you can actuate panning, rotating the view, zooming with a window, or zooming in and out with a plus minus type of zoom tool, and you can auto fit that view back to the page. You would just do these same two steps on every report page. If you so wanted to change the view itself. Yeah, you would change the, the first, you would change the view on each page to best represent that measurement. All right, well, the measurements. why don't you show us that in a couple of pages of the report you just created. I think that will highlight a little bit better exactly what it is that you mean. Okay. Well, I'm here on this, this page of the report, and I've only got a couple of measures that are right at the top of this B pillar. I don't need to be so far away from the part. So I can start zooming in and panning to center this. I can even make this view area a whole lot larger and move it. This way, regardless of what angle or what exact point in the part, I can change my views very quickly just in the, in the system itself. That's highlight what information, what measurements I'm calling out. That's right. Now this page looks good. And then I can go back to the previous page and Maybe choose a left side standard view. Oh, so there's a, a whole drag drop list of just standard quick views I can do. There's a whole drag drop list and then there's others that you can customize yourself afterwards. Let's just stick with these and zoom in on these measures here. I zoomed a little bit past one measure, saw this pan down and those charts will reappear. This page looks much better now. This page looks good. These charts are kind of confined to a smaller area of the park. So I can keep panning and zooming to enhance that view. Now that looks good. And here on your index page, you can see the red and green color coding based on your, uh, down to the bottom, looks like your CP and CPK. Okay, we're going by the uh, spec limit here, I believe. Oh, okay, that's why that's highlighted. And there's all my other information right there for reference. That's right. You can actually move these around on the index page and find out if it's just one of those measures on that feature that's red or green. 
So just to summarize, you were able to quickly import 10 data sets and all of your information. So it doesn't really matter how many data sets you have. You're able to bring it all in. Um, it just took a matter of seconds. And then you were able to auto format and auto lay out a, a report. So you had this report ready to go within a minute. And then really quickly, you can customize it with all drag and drop features to make it look how you want based on your particular project or what particular measurements or, or um, what specific inspection data you want to focus on. And then I saw that you were able to save this as a template. So that means that once I do all those changes, I can use this as a template and the next time I run my reports, it's going to have all those customized options already set up for me. I don't have to keep redoing them. Right. <clears throat> this can be used as um, what we did with the wizard was we created just a, a real easy base template and then a few minutes we enhanced it to look the way we want. Now it's usable for production and we can add and replace the data anytime there's uh, anytime there's new measurements. So if your CMM room runs a, runs a new batch of this part, you can add that data so you see more than these 10 measurements over time, or you can replace that data and just see those new measurements. And it's really easy. So now every Friday when I get my CMM data from the week, I can very quickly have this report out. And before, um, before my quality engineer now even leaves the room when he shows up to deliver the, re uh, the data, I can be handing him the report. I no longer have to take, you know, three, four days to compile and organize and redo all the images and, and create new charts or any of that. Just now it's just real clean push button. Right. It's updated and typically you would just run your print to some sort of PDF writer and send it to your boss. Fantastic. So I've got a couple of real quick questions that come up. So uh, I, I just saw that you were able to do it, save it in PDF. Uh, are there are other formats I can save my reports in to make it easy to share with my colleagues and my boss. Uh, PDF and HTML are your your easiest to share. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. All right, we already answered this one. So once I've set all this up and customized report and add my enhancements, that's all kept inside my template that I save. So when I rerun the report or I, I add or change data, it keeps all of those enhancements. Um, and of course, uh, just a real general question. Um, we just get offered five tips to enhancing your report. But there are, of course, a lot of other different kind of enhancements you can do if you want to change different um, aspects of report. Or um, and we only showed the one chart type here. So there are a number of other different kind of chart types. Do you think you might be able to show us another chart type? Oh, sure. <clears throat> Uh, let me open this feature, chart editor, and um, another commonly used one is the run chart. It's very common for um, for just showing your trend. So it's that easy to change my charts and it's automatically going to put all of my data that I imported into those new charts. Yeah, all the data that's imported will will be in each new chart. Um, let me turn another one on to run chart that actually has a bit of a trend to, to show. And so you see there easily <clears throat> just drag, drop the size to be larger. Um, if you just want to show some high level information, you can change the chart type to statistics. And now it's just going to show, based on the preferences for that chart, the last, and it's set up to show the last five out of these ten points, uh, the last five actuals, and the direction of that check with uh, X bar or mean. Now, I see as you're moving that, um, I have a real quick question about the leader line. Now, as you're moving these charts around, the leader lines are always pointing to the CAD data? The leader lines are directed to point to the CAD data. Um, 
that is interpreted when data grabber finds the nominal position for the uh, for the coordinates in each of those data sets we imported. Okay. If uh, if it needs to be moved elsewhere, it's very easy to do in the chart editor. For instance, you can change the nominal position on any of these. You know, some users may be importing. <clears throat> uh, incomplete 3D information, so they may actually have missing coordinates here, and they can go ahead and um, just use their use their keypad and update that. So I actually, I actually raised that one feature just a little tiny bit, a little white. So that means as you're moving your line enders, charts around or changing them, they're always going to point to their the measurement and the inspection data that they're related to. Mm -hmm. If you were making a report that was based on 2D graphics instead of CAD, then you simply uncheck this leader locked selection, and now you can drag it from the upper left hand corner and drop it wherever you want on the 2D image or or 3D product if you choose to. But that you would have to do on every chart. <clears throat> All right, fantastic. How's that? Does that answer your question? Mm-hmm. Yep, looks like that that answered it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull presenter back, just so we can summarize real quick, and then we'll stay in the line for a couple more questions. All right, so you can see here again, uh, just an example, QDM report. So as we went through the process before, we go ahead and bring that back up real fast. We import our graphics and data. We configure our preferences. And then QDM is going to auto-create those report pages. Any of those preferences that we configure are going to be saved to our template. So when we auto-create our report again, it's going to keep all of those same preferences. So if there's a specific view or graphic or chart type that you want to use, it's going to keep using that as you, you create a further and additional report. Bringing in your data, as Jamie mentioned, there's a number of uh, translators that are already created for various inspection devices. And with Data Grabber, you can create your own translators and that can be quickly configured for import so that we can bring in any kind of custom data sets or any additional data sets that you might need. Then your final report is going to have your index page with all of your measurements color-coded based on whatever kind of specification you have in your index or your legend with all of your graph and chart pages and, of course, your summary page at the end, all of which takes just under a minute to import and produce everything, allows you to create your reports in under 30 seconds.